So there's no question, I love watches, but I have to admit, there are some things about them that really tick me off. That was a good one. That was it, boom. What's going on everybody, Teddy Baldessar here, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of my biggest watch pet peeves and things that just annoy me about watches and just how they're designed mostly, but I'd love to hear comments down below about things that annoy you when it comes to your watches and just things about the industry in general. Uh, love to see that, we can all vent down there together. But guys, let's jump into it. All right, so for the first two pet peeves here, they kind of go hand in hand. The first one is integrated lugs and integrated bracelets. And there are some designs out there, so you look at the AP Royal Oak, for example, where the integrated bracelet really adds to the actual iconic design and makes it really the icon that it is. I think it wouldn't be the same watch if it didn't have that integrated bracelet. That said, for most watches, I don't think it really works. I don't think it looks as good. And really why I don't like it is just the simple fact that you can't change out the straps as much as you would want. And as a guy who doesn't really like metal bracelets as much as he likes leather straps, this is a big rub for me. And when you're looking at brands like Swatch, I see this all the time. All of their watches, it seems like, you can't easily change out the bracelets. And it's really annoying. You have to either buy one of theirs, maybe that's part of their ploy in you know, what they're trying to get across. So like Apple just adding all these different extensions and things you have to buy, it's just add-ons. I don't know if that's the mentality, but if you also look at something like the Oris Aquas, where it's a really awesome looking watch and a watch that I've considered buying in the past, but I don't think I could justify because of that integrated bracelet or you can't really have the same options for changing it out. So there are some really disgusting people out there and this goes for the second one. This is who I'm talking to in this second pet peeve. These watch designers that develop lug widths of 17, 19, 21 millimeters. In other words, odd number lug widths and making it nearly impossible to buy watches and straps that will fit that particular watch. And it's really annoying as a guy who has really put a lot of money and research behind the straps that he owns. And it's probably one of the biggest pet peeves that I have and can think of. So that's a definitely the top two for me, but let's keep going with the list. So I always appreciate when a watch can try to push the boundary a little bit on what is necessarily conventional. But there's one thing that, I don't know, it's definitely subjective that I don't really enjoy. And that is just awkward placed date windows. So date windows at anything other than the three o'clock position, I just, for some reason, it just doesn't look right. I think it throws off the symmetry completely. I see some at the six o'clock, sometimes at the 12 o'clock, and a lot of like vintage Longines. Uh, watches, which, I mean, it kind of annoys me. It just doesn't look right. Four o'clock, I think, can work in some scenarios, but in most scenarios, I just think it looks off it, for some reason. So it's just one of those design elements that it just does not speak to me. And it, sometimes it's really just a big turnoff in which I could never justify buying a watch. You look at the Longines 1918. I think it's a great looking vintage inspired watch, but the date window, it just bothers me like crazy how it kind of engulfs the six o'clock uh, numeral that you'll see printed on the dial, you know, like that. I just don't like how it looks. I don't like how the date window matches the actual dial color as well. So it almost gets lost. It, it just doesn't work for me. So that's another pet peeve of mine. All right, so for the next two here, it, it really is more of almost like an OCD thing for me. And I think it bothers a lot of other people too. I hear them commenting about it a lot. And there is one culprit for this one uh, issue here, and that is Seiko. And it's their chapter rings that do not align, their bezels that do not align directly. It really is annoying. And when you're looking down at your watch, if you look down at your watch like I do, I mean, I am throughout the day grabbing my watch, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the small little specific details in the watch. And something like this just infuriated me. This was something that I noticed on my Seiko SKX when I bought it. It was a little bit off the chapter ring and it just really, I couldn't handle it. The other thing is when you buy a quartz watch, and I really don't own that many quartz watches anymore. I've kind of went completely to the mechanical uh, realm of things. But when the second hand does not align perfectly with the seconds markers on the dial, for some reason, it, it just bothers me. I might sound like a maniac for saying this, but it's just a little thing that just kind of annoys me. Continuing right along with our first world problems here, we have unnecessary writing on a dial. I think the only things that should be on a dial are things that are like indicators of the hour markers, seconds markers, you have chronograph indicators, 
Makes total sense why you need to have that. I don't need to see designed in blah, blah, blah country. I don't see the made here. I don't need to know that it's an automatic watch. I, I spent X amount of money on the watch. I don't need to know that it's automatic. I probably know that. I think unnecessary writing on a watch, it's just poor design. It usually doesn't speak to anything, doesn't do anything for the actual consumer or helping with actually making the aesthetic look any better. So I think brands should just keep it simple. Don't try to overpopulate the dial with unnecessary words. And for the last pet peeve, we have something that I see mostly fashion watches being guilty of, and that is just oversized dress watches. I just hate the trend in general of larger watches. I think it's it makes you look like a fool if you have a really big watch, especially for like a skinnier kind of built guy like myself. When you've got like this 48 millimeter, 46 millimeter watch on your wrist, it just makes you look smaller. It does not look right, it's disproportionate. And I hate when, especially if you're doing this for dress watches, you see this right now with a lot of fashion watches. They, they A lot of them, most of them are not under 42 millimeters, which I think is way too big for a dress watch. I think once you start getting to the 40 millimeter mark, you're defeating the purpose of a dress watch. A dress watch should be elegant, it should be slim to the wrist, it should fit under the cuff. And most, a lot of these contemporary watch brands nowadays, they're not doing this. They're just simply just blowing these things out. It's all about grabbing attention. It's the social media age that we live in. And I just hate the trend. I hate that. And it's another pet peeve of mine in the industry. Well, all right, guys, I probably complained more here than the Kardashians would at their sweet 16 birthday party. But whatever, I'd love to hear comments down below about any watch design, uh, just pet peeves or anything just about watches in general in the comments down below. But if you like this video, guys, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon. All of that really helps out the channel, especially that bell icon. That's really how we're to grow within YouTube's algorithm. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can be entered to win the watch giveaway. Also, fill out the form down below. We announce the winner on Instagram every single month. And on top of that, if you want to support this new generation of watch lovers and this channel, be sure to go check out the Patreon. Any support there would be greatly appreciated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.